Hi, my name is Fran Boyd and I'm the Executive Director of Positive Money. Uh, we are a non-profit based in the UK and we were set up after the crash to reform the money and banking system so that it enables a fair, democratic and sustainable economy. Uh, I'm really sorry I'm not here in person, um, but hopefully we'll be joining the panel later on. So I've been asked to talk about digital cash. Um, I just want to kind of set the scene of where that proposal comes from and why Positive Money thinks it could be a really good idea to make our money and banking system more fair, more democratic and more sustainable. So obviously in 2008 we had the big crash, the global financial crisis um, and for for me uh, and why during positive money that just showed how problematic the design of our financial sector is how it is self-serving it is resulting in the rest of the economy serving banks rather than banks and finance serving the rest of the economy it's a very fragile system um, it actually is unstable by design uh, and since then, we haven't really seen enough reforms. You know, policies and politics have been around essentially kind of fiddling around the edges, making sure that when banks fail, they don't fail so disastrously, kind of a risk management approach, rather than how do we actually redesign this system um, so that it serves the wider economy. Uh, and I think the other part where this comes from is, you know, we still have a finance sector which doesn't serve most people. In the US, there are 55 million citizens, I believe, or, who are unbanked or underbanked. I think that's about 22%, which is crazy. Um, in the UK, it's about 1.53 million. So we have these banks are too big to fail, too big to jail uh, still, and the system needs to change. We also saw that um, whilst the banks were bailed out, we so the public was sold out. So in the UK, the government following the crash undertook severe austerity, really shrinking the size of the public sector. Again, through for kind of ideological pursuit rather than any fundamental economic reason. Um, and so we don't think that we can really get to a society and an economy that works for most people um, and also the environment without reforming um, money and banking. So where do central bank digital currencies come in? Well, um, what we see when we look at the banking sector is something that is, as I said, too big to fail. And a big part of that is that they control the payment system. So in the UK, five big banks have, I think, 85% of the market share. And so if any one of those banks failed in terms of, you know, couldn't make payments to each other, overnight that would seize up the payment system and the whole economy would grind to a halt. So a really key aspect of a central bank digital currency is that it would be um, mean that we could have access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it would be alongside the bank-run payment system. So people could have access. It would be a risk-free alternative to commercial bank deposits. Um, just to kind of step back a bit, a lot of the work that Positive Money does is around raising the understanding of the money we use. So all of the digital money currently that we use is actually bank deposits created when banks make loans. That means it's legally the bank's, it's not ours. And obviously we still use cash, um, but that is in decline and that's at risk, which I'll talk a little bit about later. We think of cash as really being the only state currency that we can use, whereas um, the digital money we use or whenever we use our Visa card or we um, you know, tap to make payments, that's all commercial bank deposits. So a central bank digital currency would actually be offering us a, um, a publicly owned currency that we could hold and um, actually own ourselves. And we think that would make the system a lot more resilient because it would mean that we don't have to rely on these huge commercial banks to run our payment system.
Now, there's a lot of different proposals out there in terms of central bank digital currency. Um, we wrote a paper that we released in the beginning of 2006, and we've got another one that we're hoping to release at the beginning of next year, because actually this topic has exploded. Um, and civil society groups like Positive Money thinking about it are very much, you know, not very common. Mostly we have academics looking at it, but we also have central banks themselves. Um, I think partly as a response to seeing the rise of um, things like Bitcoin and other forms of currencies, feeling like they actually need to get ahead of technology and think about what a a kind of resilient banking and payment system looks like in 10 to 20 years. Now, what central banks are less good at doing is looking at things from a perspective of trying to make the system fairer, more accessible to, to everyone, including the unbanked and the financially excluded, more resilient in terms of making sure in the long run we have less banking crises and we aren't beholden to the big banks um, and essentially contributing to a, a fair economy. So we feel like that's our role. And so we are developing the, the proposal that we think would be um, the best to have those outcomes. So as I mentioned, we think that it should be... Um, accessible to all. So there's been various proposals about who would have access to this central bank digital currency. Um, and from our perspective, that's about every citizen having access to it. It doesn't necessarily mean that the Bank of England would administer these accounts. That could be other providers, perhaps some publicly owned, some privately owned. But the actual physical, well not physical, <laughs> digital um, cash, just like um, physical cash would be, uh, you know, a hundred percent risk-free, and it would sit in account, and it wouldn't be used to speculate on like current commercial bank deposits are, uh, and therefore it would be the 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 kind of state alternative to using commercial bank money to make payments. Um, and as we've talked about, that would. Um, allow us to have a much more resilient payment system. Now, the other thing is that there's this move to get rid of cash, which Positive Money have also done quite a bit of research on. We think it's quite dangerous because, well, firstly, we think that we should all have the right to make payments in whatever form we prefer. And secondly, if you look at who uses cash, it is um, predominantly people on lower incomes, um, potentially people with um, disabilities, mental health, and for them, the, the preference of using cash is because it helps them manage, manage their money better. What we see Visa and MasterCard doing um, globally is trying to actually push everyone into only using um, or commercial bank deposits, digital money. And We've seen an advertising campaign actually called Cash is Awkward, which is pretty, uh, they're trying to make it kind of have a stigma attached to it. Um, and we have seen some governments looking towards how to get rid of cash completely. Now, regardless of whether a central bank digital currency is implemented, we think it's really important that people are allowed to continue to use cash. Um, because there's many things that we use in society. It's not one size fits all. And whilst in London, everyone might be very happy with going cashless, that just isn't the case in some of the other areas in the UK and in different socioeconomic levels. So we're really keen that we protect cash um, and resist the move. However, as you know, more people live in urban areas and potentially more people do go cashless, um, we do think it's important that we aren't just reliant on commercial bank deposits um, because lots of reasons for that. But basically, you know, we see um, a national currency as a natural monopoly. So if that's in private hands where it can be abused, where it can be for profit use, where we've seen the devastating effects of the global financial crisis, um, that isn't going to have the outcomes we want. So having a publicly owned 
um, digital currency, central bank digital currency, will go some way to um, to mitigate the the kind of excesses of the private financial sector. And additionally, as I mentioned before, we see still see a lot of people unbanked or underbanked, and financial inclusion could be a um, also benefit from a CBDC. So actually commercial banks often exclude people um, based on their kind of credit scores or background whereas a public risk-free um, bank account with a CBDC could actually go some way to improve financial inclusion which we see is, is really important. And this idea is gaining traction, we've seen various um, academics uh, talking about it, even Lagarde, whilst she was the head of the IMF. Now, obviously, she's the head of the ECB. Very interesting that she actually listed financial inclusion for marginal, marginalised communities as one of the reasons a, a CBDC might be needed. Um, so that is, that's you know moving in the right direction, we hope. Um, but one thing quite a lot of um, what I call cash campaigners talk about is their the concern of anonymity, I can never say this word, anonymity. Um, so basically, clearly cash is anonymous. And one of the big things privacy campaigners, a lot of civil society is concerned about is big data harvesting. Now, one thing you could say is, well, when we use these privately operated um, commercial bank deposits run by Visa and MasterCard, clearly we're also getting our data collected continually. Um, and this is about having that data in the hands of private companies or potentially in the hands of the state or central bank. Now, you know, that's one argument, but I would say the important thing is, is that, um, slightly varies from country to country, is that we need to advocate, if this is the direction things are going anyway, we need to advocate for um, better privacy around making payments in our banking system and our financial data basically and that can be much more easily done um, with a central bank running a CBDC. In the UK anyway the central bank is accountable to our parliament which are elected by people and so there is a really clear mechanism for understanding the transparency around data. Um, we've also done a bit of work on the different types of data that could be collected and how to go about thinking about how to anonymise those different things. Um, and as I said, we have a forthcoming paper um, coming out next year. So just to kind of conclude, um, CBDC, you know, isn't some kind of silver bullet, but if it's designed in the right way, it can increase resilience of the payment system and take away the too big to fail power of the big commercial banks. It could also increase financial inclusion and um, give us access to a public currency in the event of the decline of cash and how we use cash. And it can play a really important part in how we make our money in banking and finance sector serve the rest of the economy, people and planet, rather than us all serving the finance sector. So it's really key that um, civil society and progressive economists thoughts are heard on this topic as we see more and more central banks looking into how they would implement a CBDC because obviously it's not, um, the design is still very much up for debate. So please look out for our forthcoming paper on it next year. Thanks very much.